their fascinating colors. Unusual shapes and tranquil movements have been enjoyed for centuries the world over. Cold water fish, fancy goldfish and koi, are gifts from the Orient that Western civilization will always appreciate. Tetra is pleased to sponsor this presentation on fancy goldfish and koi. Two leading experts in the history and care of cold water fish have contributed. We are particularly indebted to Mr. Bob Spindola, an active lecturer on koi as a past chairperson on the Associated Koi Clubs of America. Bob maintains one of the United States' most prized collections of koi. Goldfish and koi are of course related, and in recent years, they have been the fastest developing segment of the ornamental fish hobby. Through increased knowledge and more exotic varieties, hobbyist demand is ever growing. This demand not only is for aquarium kept fish, but for goldfish and koi in natural or man-made ponds. In Europe, the growth of outdoor ponds is tremendous. In England, there are now as many outdoor fish ponds as there are homes with aquariums. Tetra has developed a program enabling its dealers to participate in the growth of yard ponds. Ponds that can even withstand the worst climates. Your Tetra representative can provide information on this program. While goldfish are enjoyable, both in an aquarium and an outdoor pond, their relatives, the koi, are truly magnificent in an outdoor setting. Here's Bob Spindola to provide information on this fascinating species. Persia, now known as Iran, is said to be the origin of the cultivation of carp, although they were raised for food rather than ornamentation. The earliest history of fish culture dates carp cultivation from Persia to China as early as 500 BC. However, the birthplace of true fancy hybrid carp, known as koi, began in Japan around the birth of Christ. The farmers in an area known as the Twenty Villages, now known as Nagata, constructed many ponds and reservoirs to store water for their rice fields. In time, the villagers also began raising carp in these waters. And as a pastime, they devoted many hours to selective breeding of the fish. After many centuries, they developed from the dark carp the many colorful varieties that we know today as koi. It's documented that in the year 1227 A.D., the koi culture had spread to Central Europe. However, it wasn't until 1914 that the Nishiki Goi, or Fancy Koi, gained international recognition at the Taisho Exposition in Japan. Twenty-eight carp from the twenty villages were presented for exhibit. Seven won honors and were presented to the Crown Prince Hirohito, the present Emperor of Japan. The value and fame of koi have increased ever since. This has been a brief history. Now let's define koi, or nishiki goi, the Japanese term for a colored carp. In Japan, the word nishiki goi means fancy koi. Nishiki is a fabric woven with various colored silk which came to Japan from India about 500 AD. Nishiki goi is the name for the beautiful and precious cloth. Koi actually means love in Japanese. Koi are a distant cousin to the goldfish and a direct descendant of the basic carp known in Latin as Ciprinus carpio. To the Japanese, koi are art objects and are highly appreciated for their beautiful colors and distinctive patterns. Many varieties have markings which are highly sought after in breeding. Koi are truly living jewels. Although there are seemingly hundreds of koi varieties, if one remembers the four scale types and color or pattern names of the fish, most koi can be easily recognized. Let's take a look at the first scale type, the non-metallic. These koi do not have a high luster. There are seven non-metallic color or pattern groups in this scale type. First, the kohaku. The kohaku is a koi with a white body and red accent marks. In Japanese, ko means red, haku means white. Hence, kohaku. Second, the bekko. The bekko is a white, red, or yellow-bodied koi with black accent marks. Third, the sonke. The sonke has a white body with red and black accent marks. Fourth, 
the Utsuri. The Utsuri has a black body with white, red, or yellow accent marks. The black body often appears to have tiger stripes from top to bottom. Fifth, the Showa. The Showa has a black body with red and white accent marks. The Showa has the black body and white accent marks of the Utsuri with the red accent marks of the Kohaku. Sixth is the Tancho. The Tancho is a unique group in that Koi and this group have a single red patch on the head. Tancho is always used as a prefix. A Tancho Kohaku has a white body with a single red patch on the head. A Tancho Songke has a white body, black accent marks, and the single red patch on the head. And the Tancho Showa has the black body, white accent marks, and the single red patch on the head. Seventh is all others. This group is composed of rare or unusual non-metallic koi, which do not fit in any of the groupings already mentioned. Some of the more popular koi in this grouping are the Goromo, Hijiro, and the Goshiki. Although each of the seven color or pattern groups we have reviewed are non-metallic, they can and do appear in other scale types. The metallic scale type is truly an entity unto itself. These koi have a high luster. There are three groups in the metallic scale type. First, the Utsuri and Showa are traditionally grouped together when they are metallic. They have a gold or silver sheen. Second, we have the metallic patterned group. Most metallic koi fall into this group, such as the Sangke, Harewake, and the Kujaku. The third and last group is the Muji group. Any solid colored metallic koi is in this group. The next scale type is the German scale. These koi can have scaleless smooth bodies or large scales running along the top and sides. The Shusui is not only special to the German scale type, it was the first German scale. However, remember, any koi can be German scale. The last scale type is the diamond scale. Koi with diamond scales seem to be made of thousands of glittering diamonds which sparkle in the sunlight. Here we have a diamond scale Showa. Again, any koi may be a diamond scale. Remember, koi appear in one of four types. The four scale types are non-metallic, metallic, German, and diamond. Koi are considered the largest freshwater fish. In their natural lake environment, they are bottom feeders. They are very strong and hardy, growing up to five feet and having an average lifespan of 60 to 70 years. Hanoko was born in 1751 and died in 1977 at the age of 226. It is the oldest known koi. To successfully keep koi, try to duplicate their natural environment. This includes these basic elements, water, aeration, filtration, and shade. The water should be low in hardness, slightly alkaline with a pH of about 7.2 to 7.4. This closely resembles fresh water in lakes. Of course, it should be free of chlorine and potentially toxic heavy metals. The ideal water temperature is between 60 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Koi like cool water. However, koi can survive extremes of 30 degrees to 112 degrees Fahrenheit. Large temperature changes should be avoided since it can place the fish in stress. Moderate to strong currents in the water are very beneficial because this stimulates koi to exercise and increases their appetite and growth. Strong currents can be achieved by the use of water jets and bubblers. Adequate oxygen is essential to the successful keeping of koi. Koi use more oxygen in high temperatures. This is an important reason to keep the pond shaded. The surface area of the pond should be as large as possible because it will hold more oxygen and the pond should always be well aerated. Oxygen can be increased with waterfalls, water jets, and bubblers. Another consideration is to keep the number of koi to a minimum and by all means, always keep the aeration running 24 hours a day. Koi are large fish and need oxygen even at night. Filtration of pond water is necessary in order to keep the water free from toxic waste products and debris. If chloramine is present in municipal water, zeolite should be used in the filtration system whenever new water is added.
A good filtration system combining mechanical and biological filtration is a must. There are several commercially available filtration systems from which to select. The size of the selected filter is determined by the size and surface area of the pond. For ponds up to 1,500 gallons, there is the Tetra Brillant G, which combines biological and mechanical filtration and aeration. It is very important to drain any heavy material which falls to the bottom of the pond. If left, these wastes could become toxic. Also, the pond should be skimmed to filter the top water. Frequent use of a wet vacuum helps remove these potential dangers. The last factor is shade, since it helps to keep the water temperature down and retards algae growth. The morning sun is beneficial to koi, but the strong midday sun is hard on the fish and the pond. The growth of plankton is increased in the summer sun and can cause the pond water to turn green. Too much sun also can fade the vivid colors of the fish. Whether you are deciding the location for a new pond or want the best environment for your koi in an existing pond, provide shade. Always remember that by keeping the temperature low, the fish won't use as much oxygen. This is best done by the use of natural shade, such as trees. However, artificial shade from a sunscreen can filter up to 80% of the sun. Koi ponds can be of various sizes and shapes. They can be as small as 3 feet by 6 feet or as large as a swimming pool or lake. They can be in ground or above ground. Ponds can be made of fiberglass or cement or they can be free form using a flexible liner. The key consideration when constructing a pond is careful placement on the property. Factors such as viewing, accessibility and shape are important. However, the shape of the pond must consider efficiency of maintenance and provide space enough for the koi to exercise. Most koi hobbyists build their first pond too small. All ponds must have good aeration and filtration. Enhanced with rocks and plants, koi ponds can be a beautiful addition and focal point to the garden and still be very functional. Always plan ahead. Koi grow fast and will require more room. Once the koi pond is functioning, remember that koi have inherent enemies and must be protected. Some of the more dangerous enemies can be cats, other predatory animals, and large birds. Chemical fertilizers and pesticides are lethal and should be used with great care around fish ponds. A pond that is deep, preferably a minimum of 20 inches to a maximum of 60 inches, and that is edged with smooth boulders will generally protect the fish. A protective wall of smooth boulders raised a bit from ground level will keep rainwater from draining contaminants into the pond. Birds can be discouraged by wires or a sunscreen over the pond. Koi are best fed a quality, commercially prepared food. Do not overfeed them. In colder months, feed your koi once a day only the amount they can consume in five minutes. In warmer months, two to three feedings a day are desirable. Koi can go without food for long periods by grazing on the algae on the sides and bottom of the pond. Koi will stay healthy in a good environment and live a long life. And while most koi can be purchased rather reasonably, many are expensive or develop into valuable possessions. Koi can be trained and will actually feed from a human hand and respond to their viewers. There are several regional koi clubs providing education and sponsoring competition. Proud owners can display their prize koi and vie for prizes at many shows and exhibits. And many hobbyists enjoy breeding koi. This rewarding aspect of the hobby is fairly easy and inexpensive. Nishiki goi are kept for many varied reasons by people all over the world. While a main reason for keeping koi may be the aesthetic beauty of the fish, koi ponds add beauty and value to the landscape. The rocks, shrubbery, and waterfalls can be truly breathtaking. Koi, whether you want to become a true hobbyist or just want to appreciate their unique beauty can be a lifetime of enjoyment.